The Lord be with you. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, as we prepare to enter the mystery of these three most holy days, we ask you to illumine our minds and hearts with the hope and the promise of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. Give us eyes to see him in the breaking of the bread and hearts that reach out to him in service to one another. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson for this service of Maundy Thursday is from Exodus chapter 12, beginning in the first verse where we hear the story of the Passover, which of course our Lord is going to be celebrating a Passover Seder with his disciples. And as I mentioned before, much of the Christian world does not call what we will be doing a few days hence Easter, but they call it Pascha to underscore this connection with Passover and with the passion, the suffering of our Lord. So we begin in Exodus 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to, make, to take rather a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. And the lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Our next reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning in the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And finally, our gospel lesson for this evening. The gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter, beginning in the first verse. Praise to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. 
Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. And he came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. And if God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Judeans, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
grace and peace to you from God our Father, the Spirit, our Comforter, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Sisters and brothers in Christ, welcome to the Paschal Triduum, the three holy days which begin this evening of Maundy Thursday. This service, this single service that unites these three days actually concludes at sunset on Easter Sunday. So Maundy Thursday is actually really the start of Good Friday. And Good Friday bleeds into Holy Saturday and Holy Saturday into Easter. In this most holy week, the church recalls the passion, the crucifixion, the death, the burial, and of course, the glorious resurrection of our Lord. And we proclaim that this week commemorates not just long ago events of historical interest, but events of cosmic import, events that bring together heaven and earth in ways which 2,000 years later we are still only just beginning to fathom. In fact, I want to take us on a little spacewalk here shortly. But first, a few thoughts about our reading tonight invite you to take a moment to breathe in deeply before we launch into these three holy days. This moment we begin, again, that single service that unites these three days. This first Maundy Thursday, the night, of course, of our Lord's Last Supper, the night he kneels to wash his disciples' feet, and the night he tells them to do likewise, to serve others in like measure. And then he gives them a new law, a summation of all the commandments that have come before. John chapter 13, verse 34, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Such a simple command, and so easy to do when others are lovable. But to love others as Christ has loved us? It's a tall order by any measure. And the truth is we only have love because he first loved us. That is, the love with which we love others is never properly our own, but it is his love. In fact, you might say that our job is often to get out of the way and to let God do God's work in and through us. Our job is to be channels. Our job is to not obstruct the flow of God's love through us to the world. We stand before God and we permit his love to enter us and so to pass through us into others. This is what it means to cooperate with God's grace. The church has long taught that the central way that our Lord imparts his love, his grace, his divine life is through his sacrament, which we celebrate at this table and will celebrate this Easter. This sacrament, the Holy Supper that he instituted on this night. So my challenge to us, Bethlehem, is this. Let us not neglect the sacrament of our Lord's body and blood. As Jesus said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. We cannot share, therefore, what we have not received. We cannot give away what we have first not gathered to ourselves. So tonight we remember our Lord's institution of his holy meal at that Passover Seder that he shared with his disciples. And on this theme of the importance of the sacrament to the life of the Christian. I want to finish with this interesting story from just uh, nine years ago. In 2013, astronaut Mike Hopkins was scheduled to spend six months on the International Space Station. A thrill and a half, no doubt, to be selected for this mission. But something you need to know about Mike Hopkins is that less than a year earlier, he had been received into the Catholic Church, joining his wife and children who were baptized Catholics. And as a new convert, he had spent months preparing to receive Holy Communion, and now that day had come. And Mike was overwhelmed. He was thrilled. He was excited. 
to be fully entering into the life of the church. And he was devoted. He was devoted to attending Mass weekly with his family, but, but now he was looking at a prospect six months away from his family, six months away from his church, six months off planet, which meant forgoing Jesus in the Eucharist. Or, he began to wonder, could he bring along our Lord on this mission, in, with, and under the form of consecrated bread? Would his church, would NASA, would his Russian compatriots, would they allow it? Well, this is what Mike had to say about this experience. He said, in 2011, I got assigned to a mission to the International Space Station. I was going to go up and spend six months in space starting in 2013, so I started asking the question, is there any chance that I can take the Eucharist up with me into space? The weekend before I left for Russia, we launch on a Russian rocket from Kazakhstan, I went to Mass one last time, and the priest, with permission from his bishop, consecrated the wafers into the body of Christ, and I was able to take the picks with me. Picks, P-Y-X, is a, a tiny little container in which a pastor or priest carries the body of Christ. He said, NASA had been great. They didn't have any reservations about me taking the Eucharist up or to practicing my faith in orbit. The Russians were also amazing. I went in with all my personal items and I explained that the PIX was what it was and the meaning of it to me because for them, they of course just saw it as bread, if you will, wafers, and yet for me I knew it was the body of Christ. And they completely understood and they said, okay, we'll estimate that it weighs this much and no problem, you can keep it with you. All these doors opened up and I was able to take the Eucharist up and I was able to have communion basically every week. There were a couple of times when I received communion on, I'll say, special occasions. I did two spacewalks. So in the morning of both those days, when I went out for the spacewalk, I had communion. It was really helpful for me to know that Jesus was with me when I went out the hatch into the vacuum of space. I love that line, and I'm going to read it one more time, because I think in our own way, each of us, as we survey this past year and the year prior, we can say this as well. It is helpful to know that Jesus is with us as we go out the hatch into the vacuum of space, into the unknown. And he continues. And then I received my last communion on my last day on orbit in the cupola, which is this large window that looks down at the earth. And that was a very special moment before I came home. I share this story because on the one hand, we worship the cosmic Christ, the one who is closer to us than we are to ourselves, so close to us that we cannot even see him. Yes, he abides with us. He accompanies us wherever we go. Christ is Emmanuel, God with us. And yet... As followers of Christ, we are commanded to eat the bread of heaven and to drink from the cup of salvation because Christ is our true nourishment. In the fragility of that consecrated wafer with no heft and in that little tiny sip of wine, our Lord Jesus Christ in utter humility offers himself for us in his holy meal as surely as he offered himself for us on that ignoble cross. That Jesus Christ has bound himself to word and to sacrament means that if we would be his followers, if we would follow him to Golgotha and the tomb and on into resurrection life, we too must bind ourselves to the holy sacrament and to the word of God. Through them, God fills our hearts with love so that we can love others with the very love that God is. So that lifted up by that love, we too can look out on the world, maybe not from the vantage of the International Space Station, but from wherever we are, we can take that 
heavenly view, that heavenly perspective, and look down on the world that God has made and know that we are called to love it. This is what it means to share God's love, not just to be nice to our neighbor, but to be God's own hands and feet and mouths for one another. May God help each of us in this holy endeavor until he comes again in glory, forever and ever. Amen. Welcome, Bethlehem Lutheran Church, to these three holy days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. now may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine on you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.